In this video, we're going to look at how to calculate the KSP from the solubility. So in, in these problems, what you're basically going to get is you're basically going to get a value for solubility, which we're then going to use to determine the concentration of the ions at equilibrium. And then that's going to allow us to calculate the KSP. So if you look at this problem, uh, this says the silver ion may be recovered from used photographic fixing solutions by precipitating it as silver chloride. Uh, the solubility of silver chloride is 1.9 times 10 to the minus 3 grams per liter. Calculate the KSP. So this is the typical setup. You're given a solubility, asked to calculate the KSP. So one thing we have to understand is what does the solubility mean? So the solubility in this case is equal to 1.9 times 10 to the minus 3 grams per liter. And this is grams of silver chloride. That's what the solubility is. So this is basically the, the, uh, the amount of silver chloride um, aqueous at equilibrium. So how much silver chloride can dissolve at equilibrium? That's what the solubility tells you. Um, so when you reach that equilibrium, this is going to be the concentration of the ions in solution. Now the problem with the solubility in this case is it doesn't really help us too much because we need to... Whenever we do anything with uh, equilibrium, we have to be in molar. So let's start this problem with the typical setup for how you would start any um, equilibrium problem involving KSP. So step one is going to be to write the, the reaction. So we have silver chloride solid goes back and forth with silver plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. And then directly below that, we're going to write the KSP expression. This is going to equal Ag plus times Cl minus. So silver chloride, that's the ionic formula. You have to know how to write the ionic formula of, of the compound to get started. Once you know that, then to write the equilibrium expression, you just put the, the solid on the left, the ions on the right, and the correct stoichiometric ratios. And then the KXP, KSP expression follows from the, the reaction. So now what we need, and, and what I should add to this is I should add a little ease down at the bottom here, because these are the concentration of silver and chloride that's at equilibrium or when it's saturated, right? So when this thing becomes saturated, the concentration of those ions in the saturated solution, when we've reached the solubility, that is where we want to be So um, for the KSP. So to get started on this problem, the first thing we have to do is get the solubility into something we can work with. And to do that, we have to divide by the molecular weight. That's going to allow us to go from the mass solubility, which we have over here, to the molar solubility, which is what we need to work with for equilibrium. So if you look up the weights, you get 143.32 grams for every one mole of silver chloride. And that gives you a concentration of 1.33 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per liter. Now, we have to understand carefully what this 1.33 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per liter is. This concentration of 1.33 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per liter is of silver chloride. So um, we haven't gotten to silver and chloride yet because the solubility tells you how much of the compound dissolves. Now, for this one, it's kind of easy to see because if you do the ratio, there's for every one mole of silver chloride there's one mole of Ag+. Plus. So we're going to get the same exact thing. We're going to get basically 1.33 times 10 to the minus 5 molar for silver. So we can say that the concentration of silver plus in this case is going to be 1.33 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. And it's going to be the same thing for Cl- minus because of the stoichiometric ratio. So it's a 1 to 1 ratio. So this is actually relatively simple um, in the sense that when you have a one-to-one -one ratio like this and you dissolve the compound, whatever your solubility is going to be the same thing as the concentration of the ions at equilibrium. Now we'll look at a case where that's not true in just a second, and then you'll see that you have to actually take into consideration the fact that there's some stoichiometry. Now if you were to write an ice table, you don't have to for this type of problem because we've, are, we've gotten the concentrations at equilibrium and they're going to go right in, in there. But if you wanted to write an ice table... Um, what you would find is that you'd start with zero molar and zero molar. We would have plus x and plus x, and then we would get x and x. So it makes sense that these two values are the same because according to the stoichiometry, we have um, 
the x and x, so these, these two values should be the same and are the same. So when you want to calculate a KSP, we can plug those in 1.33 times 10 to the negative 5 molar times 1.33 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. We multiply those two together, we plug in the values. So we get a KSP in this case equal to 1.77 times 10 to the minus 10. And again, uh, remember that all K expressions, all K values don't have units. So in this case, the KSP is just 1.77 times 10 to the minus 10, just like we saw with the acids and bases in KA. Okay, so let's look at lecture problem three, which is the same type of problem, but a little bit more complicated. So in this one, we have lead arsenate, which is PB3AsO42. Um, that's the ionic formula for that. And we give a molecular weight. Um, is an old-fashioned, very toxic insecticide that is slightly soluble in water. If the solubility is 3.0 times 10 to the minus 5 grams per liter, calculate the KSP for this salt. Assume that the solubility equilibrium is the only important term. Now, the, the reason why, so that last sentence may seem a little odd, but that's just because in, in some cases in real life, um, you, you may have something that's a little bit more complicated. So uh, arson, the arsenate... Um, anion is actually a little bit basic. It's a weak base. So you have a bit of a competing effect here. You have both the solubility effect and the base effect. Now that goes beyond the scope of Gen Chem. So what we just basically say is, listen, ignore everything else and just treat this like a KSP problem. So if you see that, that's why. And that just prevents people from trying to do more than they have to do um, on an exam, for example. So if we look at this problem, we're going to basically start with the same setup we did for the last one. We're going to write out the equilibrium expression. So we're going to say PB3AsO42 goes back and forth with its subsequent ions, which is going to be 3PB2 plus plus 2AsO4. Um, I guess those are 3 minus uh, to get everything charge balanced. Um, so we get uh, we get we have our equilibrium expression here and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write our KSP expression just like we would do with any other equilibrium problem. So we're going to write PB2 plus we have to put the correct stoichiometry so we're going to cube that and we get ASO4 3 minus, and we're going to square that. So we bring down the coefficients and get those. And again, we're going to recognize that our solubility, which is um, 3.0 times 10 to the minus 5. So in this case, we have 3.0 times 10 to the minus 5 grams per liter. Um, so we're going to automatically convert this to a um, molar concentration. So that we're going to divide that by 899.4 grams for every one mole. So this is going to give us a, uh, this is going to give us a concentration of 3.34 times 10 to the minus eighth moles per liter, and again we have to be careful. This 3.34 times 10 to the minus eighth moles is moles of PB3 ASO4. 2 per liter. So if we want to get the co correct concentrations, we have to do stoichiometry. So here's where the stoichiometry makes a difference. So in this case, we recognize that for every 3 moles of our salt, oh, I'm sorry, for every 1 mole of our salt, uh, PB3ASO4 2, we have 3 moles of PB2 plus. So uh, this is important because if you look, when we dissolve one mole of this, we're going to get three times that amount in lead. So we have to multiply that solubility by um, we have to multiply that solubility by three to get the lead concentration. So this is going to give us the PB two plus concentration. So if you look at that, um, that's going to if you do that multiplication, that's going to give you one. 0 0.00 times 10 to the minus 7th molar PB2 plus. And then we can do the same thing for the concentration of the ASO4 um, 3 minus concentration. So we can say that this is going to equal 3.34 
times 10 to the minus eighth um, moles per liter. And then we do this, the stoichiometry here. So for every one mole of the salt, we only had, we, we get two moles of the ASO4 three minus ion. So this is gonna give us 6.67, hold on, let me just cross that. 6.67 times 10 to the minus eighth molar of the um, ASO4 two minus. So it's important that we did this because if you just took this value, you would not get the right answer. If you just took the 3.34 times 10 to the minus eighth and plugged it in up here, you wouldn't get the right answer because you're that is not that concentration is not the concentration of lead or arsenate. That's the concentration of lead arsenate, which when it breaks up, it breaks up into three Pb2 plus and two ASO4 three, three minus. Now, if you looked at the ice table, what you would notice is, uh, and again, you don't have to make the ice table for this. I'm just showing it for, um, for clarity's sake. We would start with zero molar and zero molar and then the change in this case we're going to get plus 3x we're going to get plus 2x so we're going to wind up with 3x and 2x here and you'll notice that these are these are in a 3 to 2 ratio um, we basically have 10 and 6.666 repeating so this 3 to 2 ratio is preserved in these concentrations and this comes from the fact that there's a 3 to 2 ratio in the stoichiometry so now if we want to get the ksp we're going to take our those values that we got, the KSP is going to equal 1.00 times 10 to the minus 7th molar, which is our PB2 plus, and we're going to cube that, and then we're going to plug in 6.67 times 10 to the minus 8th molar, which is our arsenate concentration, and we're going to square that, and then when you, uh, so when you cube that one and square that one and multiply all everything together, you're going to get 4.45 times 10 to the minus 36 um, for this one. So again, the key when you're doing these problems is to understand two important things. The first is that the solubility is the, is the number of moles of the solid that will dissolve at the saturation. So that's going to give you the equilibrium amount of the solid that dissolves. And then there's one more step. If the solid breaks up into ions that are not in a one-to-one -one ratio, then that means that we have to take into consideration that stoichiometric ratio. So in this case, for every one mole of the salt that breaks up, we're going to get three moles of the lead and two moles of the arsenate. That has to be all figured out when you put it into the KSP expression. So we have one more example of um, what to do here. There's one for calcium hydroxide. Uh, and this one actually is interesting because it gives you...